to this special three-part project showcasing our new version 11 software features. Here at Vectric, we are super excited to have recently released an updated version of Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire. To help demonstrate the updates, new tools, and improvements, we have put together a set of three projects that work alone and can be stacked together to make an even more impressive conversation piece. This first project will highlight what's new in Cut2D Desktop and Pro, but remember that these features are included in VCarve Pro, Desktop, and Aspire 11.5. Over the last three years, we've all had our plans put on hold. We haven't been able to travel like we used to, meet up with others, and create new memories. Many of us have taken to reflecting on the past and dream of things going back to the normal. Here at Vectric, we've taken the time to reflect on the past achievements and how we have tried to inspire our community during these very challenging times. Unsurprisingly, the community also inspired us to keep moving forward. We are so excited for this release and this special three-part series. Life is filled with moments that we want to capture and never forget, places that we have visited or challenges that we've overcome. In my case, I just recently climbed to one of the highest peaks in the UK, Snowden. I received a nice email and a printable certificate, but I wanted something a little bit more, well, tangible. Let's have a look at how we can take this iconic mountain and make a lovely keepsake with the help of the new and upgraded tools in our version 11.5 Cut2D software. This video will show how we have used new version 11.5 features to create this project. It's not a step-by-step -step project tutorial, so it will be helpful if you're comfortable with the version 11 features of your software. Just head over to Google Maps. I've made my Google Maps full screen so I can see things better. And here we have England. Now all we need to do is go up here and search for Snowden. And we'll zoom right into Mount Snowden. So let's close down this extra information that we don't need. And we're just gonna zoom out and position the map so that we can see all the elevations that we want to be able to trace. Now ultimately this map is gonna be a square. So I wanna be sure that I get enough information here along with enough ele elevations being able to be seen. Now to get the elevations up in your Google Maps, make sure that in your layers men menu here, you've got your train turned on and then under the train, we've got view topography and elevations turned on as well. And that'll give you all these nice elevation lines. I think that, that looks pretty good right there. So let's just go ahead now and snip this screen. So in Windows, we can just hold down our Windows, Shift and S and that'll bring up our Windows snipping tool. And we can just go ahead and snip a chunk of this out that we're gonna need. Something like that. And that'll copy directly to our clipboard. Now we just need to paste that into our Cut2D software. Okay, here we have Cut2D version 11.5. We can create a brand new file. It's gonna be a single sided job. We're gonna make this 12 inches by 12 inches. And the thickness doesn't matter at this point because we're just gonna use this sheet for the design purposes. We're gonna make sure this is in inches. We don't need to worry about zeroing uh, or Z zero position. We'll set our data into the bottom left and then we're gonna click okay. Seeing as I've gone ahead and clipped that map to my clipboard, I just need to press control and V and there it is right there. Now this is great and you can see that we can see all the elevations that we need. Now let's just go ahead and put this into a shape that we need in the end so that all of our vectors are at least correctly orientated to the, our final finished size of our project. Let's go and create a box we're gonna make sure this is width is 8.5 by 8.5, and we're gonna radius the external corners by 0.125 of an inch. And we'll go ahead and create that, and we can close this down. Let's go ahead and create a brand new uh, layer up here, and we're gonna call this elevation lines. And we can change the color to be orange. And we're gonna select that vector and right click on that, and we are gonna move that to layer elevation lines. And now it's going to be orange. Now what we can do is take the bitmap and we can size it up so this part that we want to use is inside of that box. That looks pretty good right there. We want most of that water there. We want the island, we want the peak of Snowden, that's important. And just kind of move it up a little bit. That looks great. So with that bitmap selected, we're going to go ahead and choose to use this brand new tool called the free hand drawing tool. So we're going to select that. And you'll see this is the freehand drawing tool. We have a smoothness option, a stabilize option. We can end vectors at the cursor. We can fade the selected bitmap. And because we had the bitmap selected before we entered this tool, we have this option available to us. If we didn't, it would be grayed out. We have some tool tips down here at the bottom to help us out in case we forget anything. 
Now the smoothness, that's how the software is going to deal with how smooth the resulting line is going to be that we create. The stabilizer, this is the stabilizing circle that I'll point out in a second to you, but that'll help you keep your line nice and smooth. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And let's choose one of the elevations that we want to start to draw around. Let's go with the 1000 meters right here. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and drop our cursor using our left mouse button. And you'll see that all of a sudden we have a stabilizing circle and then we can start to move our mouse. But nothing happens until we actually hit the outside of the circle. And when we do, the line starts to be drawn from the inside of that circle. Now that's important because the stabilizing circle help, helps us to keep this shape the way we want it to be. And we're at the very end. We can go ahead and press tab on our keyboard to end that line. And we can zoom out again. And we continue to go ahead and draw all of the elevation lines that we want. Now this one here is going to be at the 8 100 meter mark. Go ahead and just go around the edges here. We're going to go around this way. And if, if you decide that you need to be a little closer, you can let go of your mouse, use your scroll wheel, but then hold down the control key and hover over the end of the line and you can reattach your next line segment to the end of that one. And we're going to go ahead and draw the end of this. Once we go outside the orange box, we're not going to worry about the line because we're going to clip all that off in the end. And we're going to continue to draw all the different elevations that we want. Now here we are, we just need to finish off our last of our lines. Now top tip here is that you want to be sure that you're looking at the center of that circle while you draw, not where your crosshair is. It'll make it a bit easier for you. We'll press tab to finish that off. And that's great. Let's close this down. Now that we have all of our vectors that we need drawn with the freehand drawing tool to create the different levels, let's go ahead and open up the final file that you're going to get with this project. As you can see, the finished project file has been set up into sheets because we'll be using different materials to build up this project. Let's have a look at our layout map. As you can see, we finished up all of the different contours that we need and we've cropped them to fit inside of this overall shape. We've also added in some vectors here that we are actually going to go ahead and use to create text. Now because we don't have a vCarve toolpath strategy included in the Cut2D, we're going to use the profile toolpath with a vBit. That way we can go ahead and get the text on here where we want it. Now let's have a look at the sheets that we have and we'll zoom out. We're going to create these different layers of the map in thin plywood. And so what I've done is I've created two sheets with the proper dimensions of the pieces of plywood that I have. And I've gone ahead and broken out this map onto the different sheets. So we have the bottom layer, the next layer up, the next layer, the next layer, and then some extra bits to glue on the top. Let's go ahead and have a look at this sheet right here. We'll double click on that. We'll zoom in a little bit, bring up our tool pass tab, and we'll tile our views. Zoom back in here a bit just so we can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and select the text toolpath, and we're going to go ahead and preview this. Now, one of the great new features of version 11.5 is that we can actually twiddle while we're previewing our toolpath. So if we turn this all the way down and we say preview selected toolpath, you'll see that there's the bit, and I can go ahead now and zoom around and see what's going on. That way I can identify any trouble spots that might happen. Let's speed that back up again. There we have it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this cutout toolpath. Again, if we can take a look at that. We can zoom in all around it while it's doing its previewing. And again, we can see any trouble spots that might arise. That looks great. Let's just go ahead and close this down. Let's maximize our 2D view. Zoom out a little bit and take a look at this last sheet over here, which is the frame. So this map frame is what's going to house all these different layers once we get them glued up. If we go ahead and tile our view. Let's go ahead and preview these toolpaths. So what we're going to have in the end is a profile cut that's going to cut at the center of this with a very small shelf at the bottom of this so we can set our glued up map inside the frame. And then we have this decorative lip on the outside. Now we can leave it as is if this is as far as we're going to take this project. Or what you can do is have a look at the 
the Explorer's Frame that we're going to create in vCarve 11.5 so you can explore some of those brand new features that are going to be included in that. Let's head over to the labs now and see how this adventure map cut and how we decided to finish it. So there you have it. I think that turned out pretty nice. The features that I covered in this project are the freehand drawing tools that I use to trace the map. I twiddled during the toolpath preview so I could look for any errors that were going to crop up. Other notable software features that I used were centerline fonts with a V-bit to add text and labels. I used sheets to organize my material sizes. I hope this project inspired you to set out on a new adventure, reflect on past travel and make your own adventure map. If you're curious on how you can build on this project to make an even better version, how about you check out the next two videos in this series. We'll add a wonderful frame to the top of this adventure map using some of the new features of vCarve 11.5. We have done lots of work under the hood with regards to hardware acceleration that many of the features of your software will benefit from. You should see things like faster rendering and file importing. We can't wait to see what you make with your Vectric software. Tag us in your favorite social posts or create a new post in our Vectric user forum. We want to see what you're making. Until next time, keep making fun stuff and be safe.